Romeo and Juliet with blood? Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Kyle and I make reactions to movies and TV shows. Da da. So this might have come out of left field for y'all because it came out of left field for me. Last month I decided I want to start listening to you guys more when it comes to movie reactions because you guys have a tendency to pick things that I don't think of that just never come to my head. Or I think to myself, well, this would be cool, but no one would want to watch me watch it. Uh, so I put up a poll and I put a couple of movies in there that I had seen in the comment section. One of them was Galaxy Quest. And not surprisingly, that one right away was in the lead. But then one thing that really shocked me, I saw Underworld in just like a passing by screen. I don't know what I was looking at on the computer. I think it was the computer. I put it up just as a, hey, maybe they'll be interested. I didn't think anyone was gonna vote for it because I had contenders like Dark City, which I have had a lot of people recommend me in the comments, and um, Ex Machina was on there. I've had a few people recommend that to me in the comment section. But no, Underworld just like came out of nowhere and all of a sudden it was, right it tied with galaxy quest so here we are and i have technically seen these this is a re-reaction but i don't care because i got a lot of stuff to say about these movies i loved them they are so good but you know i'm noticing a trend in my movie viewing habits because i tell you guys that i love something and then i follow it up two seconds later with saying but I haven't watched it in a decade. I said when I reacted to Titanic and Hocus Pocus and Practical Magic, I tried to keep my watch number of those movies very low, even though they are incredibly, I just, I love them. I absolutely love them. I love Titanic, but I will purposely only watch it at least once a year. That's it. I think that I might be doing that unconsciously with some of the movies that I like. If you want to show support for the channel, go ahead and give it a like. Leave a comment down below. Here's the question I have for you. When you first saw this, did you want to be a lichen or did you want to be a vampire? Because I remember I wanted to be a vampire. But then when I watched Rise of the Lichens, I wanted to be a werewolf. So I switched it up over time. What clan did you want to be in? And the full version, along with, if you would like to participate in those polls, is in the description down below. Otherwise, let's get to suck. No, no, um, blood sucking. Let's get to blood sucking. Warning. This is a reaction, commentary, and analysis channel. Means I'm going to talk, means I will pause, means I will mute. You've been warned. Oh, this font. It's already bringing back memories. This is 2003, right? So Blade would have already come out. So I think this was heavily influenced by Blade. The war had all but ground to a halt in the blink of an eye. Lucian, the most feared and ruthless leader ever to rule the Lycan clan, had finally been killed. This monologue set up so much. Like, it really raised expectations. It soon, it soon. Nearly six centuries had passed since that night, yet the ancient blood feud proved unwilling to follow Lucian to the grave. The war itself had become more perilous. Older, more powerful Lycans were now able to change at will, hunt them down and kill them off, one by one. A most successful campaign. Perhaps too successful. I remember that line, because it stands out. Um, it confused the crap out of me because there's obviously a lot of lore happening here and this was much different than other vampire movies that i had been exposed to like the weapons of the previous century we too would become obsolete like up until this point my like viewpoint of being a vampire was it's bad. It's not something you want. But vampires are the bad guys. And then here comes this movie, and all of a sudden, you're not just... Vampires aren't really good guys or bad guys, but you're rooting for them. I also remember that I had no idea where the heck this took place. For some reason, I thought it was London for the longest time. 
And it's Budapest, right? That's where this is taking place? It was love at first sight. This guy, I swear I've seen him in like a hundred things, but I can't name them. Tell me where he's from. Someone go down there and tell me where this guy is from. I feel like there is a mixture of Blade and the Matrix happening here. Like the subway is very, like the green, the greenish tile has given me like Matrix vibes, Matrix vibes, but the trench coats scream Blade. Well, the trench coats kind of scream the Matrix too. Get him, girl. So many bullets. So many misses. Silver bullets, those must have been some expensive ass bullets. Like. I think one of the things that really took me by surprise with this movie is that a werewolf could overtake a vampire. Again, I don't know what it was in my teeny bopper little brain that made me think that for some reason, vampires were supposed to be able to just take on anything. And it really shocked me this idea that a werewolf, even the kind of transformation that we're about to see kind of werewolf would be able to take out a vampire. But I realized later on, because I mean, I didn't watch this just once and then never watch it again. I did realize later on that these vampires and werewolves are much more biological in nature than supernatural. I do think there are some supernatural aspects in this movie. But a lot of it is explained through biology, um, especially in the second movie. Or maybe it's the third movie. No, I think it's the second. It might be both. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the vampires are like more like disease carriers rather than like supernatural creatures. The werewolves, I guess, are supposed to also be disease carriers, but I mean like that transformation. I don't know. You regrowing some skin pretty dang quickly there. But neither, nonetheless, I think it's supposed to be more of a biological aspect. And the werewolves are physically larger than the vampires. So it makes sense that they would be able to take one out so easy. Like, he's just sitting there, like, snarling. <laughs> you got this giant beast coming at him like i don't know what he expected to happen i think i would just turn around and ran doesn't mean i would have survived but i still would have ran this was also one of the first movies that didn't make vampirism out to be like a curse i think even nowadays when vampires are the good guys aka Twilight, they still kind of make it into a curse. The clock tower and her eyes like turning subtly blue and the fangs is a look. I mean, Kate Beckinsale is a look. Also, I mean, look at these guys. Like, this movie really wanted you to root for the vampires. Because you got the vampires living in, like, these bougie-ass mansions. And then you got homeless people. I mean, although... Acting I... like a pack of rabid dogs! I st Not if you expect to defeat the vampires on their own ground. I still cannot see him in this role. I mean, he's excellent. Michael Sheen is... Excellent here, but I just I can't see him in it I can't see him in the role even though he's so good because like he, 
all of his other roles, he's such like an innocent goody two shoes. And then here you have him as this badass werewolf leader. What is that? My brain does not compute. Nonetheless, again, he was amazing. We have a serious problem. I'll have to run a few tests. It's definitely an irradiated fluid of some sort. Ultraviolet ammunition. We should gather the death dealers and head back down there in force. Absolutely not. Not now. Not for a random incursion. The awakening is only a few days off. And this house is in a state of unrest as it is. And from the commotion I heard down in that tunnel... You said yourself you didn't actually see anything. God, Craven was like... He's such an asshole. That name is so on point. <laughs> no idea what they were all i can say is that like this movie really had a lot of world building in it without actually giving you the world building until the second movie so like so much of this right over my head well i seriously doubt victor would want you freezing to death in here staring at his tomb for hours on end craven i'll never understand why victor left him in charge he's a bureaucrat not a warrior Oh, uh, yes. You should definitely wear this one. It's perfect. <laughs> Although I have to imagine it would be comfortable than that, like, skin-tight cat suit that she has on. Because that cannot be comfortable to sit down in. Or could you even pee in something like that? I don't know. He's attractive for a human. Who's attractive? It's the most blurry picture ever. How you know that? Do you That's see this better. human? What of him? I can't be positive, but I'm beginning to think the lichens are blessed. Other than food, why would lichen stalk a human? Well, you see, there's this whole plan to kill all the vampires and then take over the... I don't think they wanted to take over the world, but, you know, kill all the vampires and become a super species and you're in on it, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> Negative. At some point, I can't even believe it is Michael Sheen. We were ambushed. Death dealers, three of them. <laughs> we lost them. His voice? <laughs> Holy crap, that is low. Is that natural? The vampires didn't realize you were following a human. Did they, Race? No, I'm not sure. I think I would be scared to get Michael Sheen mad is he a parent his children must be very well behaved you really must have a look at this michael must i do everything myself our noble houses may be separated by a great ocean and when amelia arrives to awaken marcus in just two days time so there is some indication here that there is a I mean, they said separated by a great ocean, so I'm assuming the Atlantic. I assume they're talking about the United States, Canada, Mexico, North America, South America, something, right? And I don't know if this is elaborated on in movies four through seven. I think there are seven movies, six movies. I stopped watching after movie four, and I remember that I barely watched movie four because... Okay, so as far as I'm kind of concerned, the three movies that actually make up Underworld are one, two, and three. Um, I feel like after three, they kind of got money hungry and said, we'll make another one. We'll make another one. We'll make another one. So if movies four through whatever do confirm that there is a coven in the Americas, I apologize, but I would really like a movie if they want to start the franchise up again of that coven like maybe pre these events that way they don't have to deal with the crap that happened in movie four because in movie four they get exposed right clearly this guy's neighbors hate him since none of them you know called the police you know what this scene reminds me of? You know that scene in Atlantis 
the Disney movie. You know what I'm talking about. He has a normal life, and then it's all turned upside down. Da 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 da. <laughs> you know, it occurs to me that we never actually really get any backstory for Michael. That's an entrance. Why are they after you? But not to be upstaged, here we have another entrance. Okay, that's freaking cool. These are some high power rounds to go through. How many feet of concrete would this probably be? Like a foot, two feet? Or maybe not even concrete. Hello, Michael. Michael. I totally guessed! <laughs> You know, listen, I know it was supposed to be gross, but it kind of... Ooh. Oh my. Daddy. Oh, this song. Oh my god, I played this so many times on my way to work. Because, you know, you need those pump-up songs when you're going to kill your soul gradually. If you get the chance... You should totally look up the soundtrack to this movie. It is amazing. Um, there's one song, I think it's called Rock Collecting, that has the ultraviolet lady. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Although I remember thinking, she's a vampire, why would this matter, right? Because vampires are supposed to be able to heal themselves real fast. They did not take that approach. Rays didn't bring back this. I've tasted his flesh. Just two days till full moon. Soon he will come looking for us. Positive. Yeah, you know what? I was just in love with the whole vampire allure, but I would totally want to be a werewolf. What do vampires really do? Okay, so he passed out, and she's gonna wake up and take him back to the mansion. Was that the girl from the third movie? Yeah, that was totally her! Where am I? You're safe. I'm Celine. <laughs> Did he really just do like the whole like cross-eyed thing before he went out? Oh god, you're going to try to turn him, aren't you? Of course not. Then why did you bring him here? This is completely unacceptable. A human that you've since brought back into my house? As far as I'm concerned, this is still Victor's house. <clears throat> Look, I don't want to argue. Why is Craven in charge? Why isn't Amelia here? Well, I guess if there's two covens, Amelia would be in charge of the entire coven. And maybe she's just spending most of her time with the second one, so Craven has to manage this one. Right? Because there are three elders. There's Amelia, Marcus, and Victor. Marcus and Victor are asleep. So yeah. Hmm. I guess that never occurred to me, why Craven is even the one in charge. Nonetheless, I mean, can we say that he's maybe not so in charge? Because, I mean, Celine, she, she's just doing her own thing. She don't really care what he says, you know. I mean, really, he's just wasting his breath. He should give it up. Because, clearly, she doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I don't think you want to take her on, dude. Oh, I would have just loved for her to, like, rip him in half after this. Do you believe Lucian died the way they say he did? It's nothing but an ancient story. His story. The victor believed him, and that's all that matters. Now, where are you going with this, anyway? Oh, 
this is very cool, the wood cuttings. Like I said, there was clearly a whole bunch of world building and lore, but they were only showing you like a glimpse of it, which I don't think I've seen a movie do since. I think this is the first and only time. Also, there would be some question as to why you would not just go to like a regular emergency room and... Hey! But I desperately need your guidance. This was really cool. The idea that vampires can like hibernate. You know, I remember thinking to myself, why would Victor agree to this? Because his character doesn't seem like it. But having thought it over for some time, and seeing the movie a few times, I actually do think that Victor genuinely had the best interest of the coven at heart. It was just very warped. To my knowledge, an awakening has never been attempted by one such as myself. I can only hope Victor will hear my plea. You know, one thing they never explored, I don't think, is how the elders began hibernation. Did they just lay down in their coffin and go to sleep and never wake up? Or did they have to like purposely sit there and de bloodify desanguinate? For I believe that Lucian is alive and well. Here, it would mean that Craven is in league with him. If that isn't like an image of Dracula, I don't know what would be. I, I gotta give it to the producers or directors or whoever's in charge of like the aesthetic of underworld designers i guess like they killed it and then he willingly comes back i did not remember this Celine! i want to speak with Celine. damn you'll never be welcome to this house again uh, bleep, 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 bleep. now that victor's awake we'll see what he has to say about that get to him What's this ruckus? That's right. Be afraid. Like, this is pretty cool. This had to be influenced by Blade, right? This had to be. We have much to discuss, Selene and I. Perhaps I should have left someone else in charge of my affairs. If you're in need of rest. I've rested enough. <laughs> well, that just makes the whole Lucian Michael Sheen look look like puppies and kittens. <laughs> I will admit, when I first saw this, I think I thought that Victor would have been younger. Why do you hate them so much? I've already told you we're at war. Something was in the stable, tearing our horses to pieces. The war had spilled into our house. Well, actually, about that. Victor. The oldest and strongest of us. That night, he made me a vampire. He gave me the strength to avenge my family. You know, it just occurred to me that she's doing a lot. Like, she's putting a lot at risk for him. And this is the first conversation that they've had. Like, it really was love at first sight, wasn't it? Manipulating you. We didn't know that Michael was going to become like a hybrid, right? I didn't. I didn't know. I thought that line about how like if two people bite him, I think she said it when they were in the car a few scenes ago, um, if a vampire bites him after a lichen bites him, he'll die. I'm trying to remember, what did I think was happening at this point? I know that I didn't realize that he was going to become a hybrid, so I guess I just thought that she was going to fall in love with the vampire and they were going to, like, be... I don't even know what the word would be. Romeo and Juliet with blood? Ooh, girl. One heck of a kiss, wasn't it? These guys really just sit around and walk around all the time, though, don't they? you 
do this to me. <laughs> he had it coming so bad. He's very intimidating. Even when he's just like sitting there, he's very intimidating. Why have you come to believe that Lucian still lives? But I've given you all the proof you need. Incoherent thoughts and images. But I did see Lucian. I shot him. You must believe me. The chain has never been broken. One awake, two asleep. That's the way of it. It is Marcus's turn to reign. The coven is in danger and Michael is the <laughs> Lichen. You will not be shown an ounce of leniency. I think it's his voice. It's so like crisp. You have broken the chain and the covenant. Tell me, did you have the nerve to cut the skin from his arm or did Lucian do it for you? Mark my words. Soon you'll be seeing things my way. He is in some heavy denial if he thinks that even killing all the other vampires would get her on his side. You know, for an elder almost as old as Marcus and uh, Victor were, they took her down pretty darn easy. Why are you helping me? I'm not. I'm helping me. Ow. It's Celine. She's escaped to go to him, to Michael. That's quite a few of them. I don't remember how this turns out. It's like he became a cat. He just knows how to land on his feet. <laughs> That's unusual. I mean, and realistic. She didn't try and shoot off like 20 rounds at it and miss. She just like, it's too far gone. So she let it go. A plus writers. Maybe we should pull over and dose him. Fuck him. He'll be all right. Yeah, no, you really should. <laughs> Instead of dosing him, they just turn the music up really loud. I mean, you got to have the perfect soundtrack for this first transformation, right? Oh, now we got some fog coming in. OK. <laughs> got to make an entrance. Now, I want you to tell them exactly what you told me. This must be a common situation for them to have installed chains in the floor. I wonder if the elders, like, fed here. Ah, even at the cellular level, our species seem destined to destroy each other. A direct descendant of Alexander Covinus. He became the first true immortal. So, I know that Celine had said earlier in the movie that Victor was the oldest, but I remember when I first watched this, it, f it flew completely over my head because the way that this scene is being presented, well, we know from the second movie that it's actually the real lore, but from the way this scene was being presented, even in the first movie, it was kind of like, this is the lore. This is what was actually true. So I thought that what he's saying was like, correct. And I had no idea that people were supposed to believe that it was fiction, even though I think in like a few seconds, Victor is going to say that it's just a story. I thought it was real. Did anyone else think it was real? Did the amount of lore in this movie kind of confuse you, even though I sucked it up? I just, I loved it. Like I said, I've never seen a movie since this movie that has had so much world building like you can tell that the writers did a whole bunch of world building and then they didn't include a lot of backstory on why certain things were the way they were so i wonder if they just knew they were going to get a second movie where they could explore all of that i don't know the sons of the Corvinus clan 
One bitten by bat, one by wolf. But our species do have a common ancestor. There is a descendant of Corvinus lying there, not three feet from you. But he's already a vampire. The Corvinus strain itself was hidden away in the genetic code of his human descendants. It's a good thing that no one, you know, stopped having babies then. <laughs> Who? I mean, he did tell a really engrossing story, so it's it's a little bit believable if you stretch your imagination that Victor would notice or wouldn't notice that Craven skedaddled. So this house will lie in ruins. Half vampire, half lichen, but stronger Madden than both. both. Oh my God! There's more walking. I never realized just how much, like, serious and intense walking had to happen in this movie. My lord, what of Amelia? They bled her dry. Oh. Oh. You really gotta hit someone hard to dislodge their face from their face. Absolution will be yours the moment you kill the descendant of Corvinus. That is some master manipulation. He admitted he was wrong, he admitted she was right, and yet he still made it her responsibility to absolve her. Like, that's pure evil. That's enough! <laughs> Just, yes. Speaking of manners, where am I? Forgive me. I've tied you up, and Hawk tied your mouth. <laughs> you are one of us. Your war, it has nothing to do with me. My war. You know, they really did a benefit by cutting the third movie into this one. I really like it. I think the burn scene, I think when Sonya burns in the original Underworld, it's more violent than it was in the third one. Maybe this one was more violent. Well, we'll know when I get to Rise of the Lycans now, won't we? Give Michael Sheen all the awards. Just give him all the awards. Dude has range. Sonia. That's what started the war. We were slaves once. It was forbidden. Our union feared it so much. He killed her. I mean, ironically then, couldn't you have accomplished what you're trying to accomplish just by finding another vampire girlfriend? Well, I guess maybe it was a rarity that she got pregnant. The council has been destroyed. Soon you will have it all. How do you expect me to assume control now that Victor's been awakened? There's no defeating him. And that is precisely why I need Michael. I wonder if the Craven actor had a hard time with the fangs in his mouth, the way he's speaking. It's Victor. Time to turn back into a pumpkin princess. I guess it never occurred to you that you might actually have to bleed to pull off this little coup. I, I have real conflicting thoughts about what this, about Lucian dying. Because I would say that my two favorite movies are the next two, so Underworld 2, Evolution, and uh, Rise of the Lycans. But I, I'm guessing when I react to those movies, I'm going to just like flip back and forth between Evolution is better, Lycans is better. Evolution is better, Lycans is better. So I don't know if they made a good decision killing off Lucian in this movie. However, as I have stated, these movies seem to have so much world building around them that it makes me, or at least this movie does, it makes it hard for me to believe that movies two and three weren't already planned in some kind of way when this was being written. Maybe they didn't know if they were going to get funding for it, you know, Maybe it wasn't explicitly written, but I have to believe that the world was built 
already for movies two and three when this was being written for them to include all of the stuff that we're not seeing but still kind of seeing if you know what i mean so i guess what i wonder if they didn't anticipate the lucian character being so likable or michael sheen being able to play him so well I don't know. I just, it's, it felt like a big mistake. Although I will say, gotta give credit where credit's due. Writers that have the guts to kill a likable main character, if you can do it well, it can be done well. Like, Evolution was still a really, really good movie, even though it didn't include Lucian. And killed by Craven. I mean, Craven of all people. We really were just like brought in at the end of the story, weren't we? <laughs> oh, okay, we're going down. Get him, Celine. You know, those seem like that. I mean, it's a cool weapon, but very impractical. Like, it literally requires that this person come within like 10 feet of you. He's just kind of inching closer and closer. And now it's stuck and you're dead. Ooh, backflip. Oh, and a superhero landing. Yeah, they had to know they were going to get a second movie to let this character of all characters get away and survive. They had to know. Now that's a double tap. This is a triple tap. They kill you too just for helping me. Oh, he sees himself. Okay, Victor's walking though. That is intimidating. Like all the other walking. But Victor, he's on a mission. This man really said, bitch, please. <sighs> they really wanted us to hate Craven. I mean, they really wanted us to want him dead. But let me tell you a little something about your beloved dark father. He's the one who killed your family. Oh, here's Let the reveal. Lies. Believe what you want. Not really. This is by my side. Oh god, dude, get over yourself. <laughs> that I did not remember. Bite him. A vampire of lichen was stronger than both. You know, this is unusual. In vampire movies, it is almost exclusively men biting women. This was a complete role reversal. I like it. But my will is done regardless. Oh, just go slink away and die, jackass. Where's Craven? You have no idea how many weeks after this movie came out and I saw it that I looked f everywhere for pitch black contact lenses. Wasn't the light. Is it not a fair trade, the life I have granted you, the, the gift of immortality? I loved my daughter. Mm. I did what was necessary to protect the species. See, this is where I don't know. I, I, I think Victor's intentions are incredibly misguided and in that he's a very manipulative SOB. But I do think he kind of believes what he's saying. You know, I can't remember if I thought that Victor was going to die here or not. I'm pretty sure I was pretty sure, but I don't know. Because, like, I knew Celine was going to survive. But then, I don't know. Because I thought, I'm pretty sure I knew Lucian was going to survive, and he didn't. So, at this point, I think I might have been just like, someone will survive? 
The dude is right in front of you. He's not moving. How are you missing? Now, I think we can all agree that what's about to happen here is not physically possible, right? But what I like to think is that his wound actually started to heal because he's a vampire. And that's why his head didn't like immediately fall off until like it was just too much and... Yes, I am 100% convinced that they knew a second movie was coming and they knew what would be in it because, you know what, there's just not a good reason for her to take that. I should go back and count how many times these two have actually spoken to each other. Ah, uh, you know what? <sighs> Durr, of course they knew a second movie was coming because of this scene. The consequences of this night will reverberate through the halls of both great covens for many years to come. I will become the hunted. And that was my reaction to Underworld, the first one. Um, I kind of took a different approach to reacting to this. I included much more dialogue in the reaction itself. So I don't have a whole lot to say here at the end. I really like it. I think it still holds up, even though it's almost 20 years old. Holy crap. I have just thought about that right now. 2003. 20 years, guys. Oh my God. Okay. Well, anyways, it still holds up. Um, Teenage Me was not just being a doofus. This was a good movie, good characters. I think rewatching it though, there is some stuff that really stood out to me. Michael Sheen's character, I did not give this guy the credit that he deserved when I first saw this movie because boss. Seriously, Victor's character, I, I remember I was intimidated by him, by him, but I still got to give it to him. He might be an ass, but he is very convincing as the Victor character. You know, I mean, like, I really do think he thinks that his actions are good, even though a little self-serving at times. Uh, and... When we get to Rise of the Lycans, I think there's a real conversation to be had about whether he actually killed Sonia because he thought it was the best interest of the coven. <sighs> Still very messed up, but nonetheless. Um, Craven. <laughs> you know, I think Craven got just a little bit too much screen time. I didn't realize it when I first saw this, but I think he did. I just... He was a very on-the-nose character. He was, you know, someone who you, you really didn't get any surprises from. I think the main surprise that Craven got was that he survived the movie. But, like I said at the very end, and I should have realized throughout the entire thing, they knew they had a second movie coming. They had to. Either that, or they were fully prepared for a second movie, and were fully prepared for audiences to be screwed over if they didn't actually get the funding for it. Which, you know, some movies do that. You know, some TV shows do that too. You got, it's, it's a risky proposition. If a TV show or a movie intentionally leaves a cliffhanger hoping for a renewal or another movie, they better get it. Because if they don't, the fans are just going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why would you toy with us like this? Um, the aesthetic of the movie was awesome. Like I said, props to the designers of this movie. You really feel like you are immersed in this world. So there wasn't just a lot of world building in it. There was a lot of aesthetic pleasing things like... I don't think at any point you really felt like you were in the real world. And that could have been due to where they were filming too. And I, I said it was Budapest. I think it was Budapest. I hope it was Budapest. 
that this takes place in. But I don't know if they filmed in Budapest or maybe this takes place in London and they filmed in Budapest and I just got that mixed up in my head. Regardless, um, it just... You really do believe that you are in, like, another world that is not really our world. And there were things that I caught this time around that I didn't catch on my first viewing. Like, the fact that... I Because I... I hadn't seen the movie, what's it called? Daybreakers? It's the one with um, the skateboard dude from Sinister, Tony Hawk. Is that his name? Or am I thinking of someone else? Who, like, vampires take over the world and they start running out of humans. Like, I think most of us would agree that if vampires existed, why wouldn't they just take over? Um, usually movies deal with this in one of two ways. Either they make it kind of like Buffy, where it's not just a matter of biting someone, but vampires have to actually make a conscious decision to turn you, so you have to bite them, then they have to drink your blood. Or sometimes movies will go the route of vampires see vampirism as kind of like a sacred thing and don't want to just give it to anyone. This one actually found a third option, which is that you can bite anyone you want, but I think based on, I think it was two conversations. One, Celine said, if, or usually the, va usually the viruses they transmit are deadly. And two, the blonde girl uh, said, are you going to try to turn him? So I think those two, those two things in combination really lend to the idea that it must be rare to bite someone as a vampire or a lichen and they don't die. Which makes you kind of wonder. It's like, well, maybe Victor's different and everyone he bites just becomes a vampire because he's like an elder. Otherwise, how would he have known that Celine would actually turn into a vampire? That might also just be a plot hole. But I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Um, let me know if you like this new format and I will see you next time. Don't forget to like or comment if you want to help support the channel. Let's the algorithm know that more people should see. And the full version, along with the ability to do those polls, like I said in the beginning, is in the description. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Like, clearly, Amelia was a warrior. Like, this girl had a story. See, now I'm going to go, like, urban exploring and see if I can find a vampire hideout. Yeah, you screwed up. You in trouble. Daddy's gonna spank you. Seems like an interesting place to put a trap. Were there a lot of people wandering on that he was just feeding to lichens? Like, lichen gummy wares? I legit thought he was dead. I remember. I was, like, heartbroken. I thought he was gone. Once again. In the, you know, last movie I was keeping track of how often they walked around. This time I'm keeping track of how often people don't have their shirts on. I had fangs. I had fangs that I was actually going to wear. I talked about this in Discord. Um, so what ended up happening was I tr I had these fangs from long time ago. I think I originally bought them at... You remember like those old like goth stores that you would find in like big malls? Well, I think I originally bought them when I was maybe like, oh God, it would have had to have been early high school years for a costume. And I hadn't worn them since. So I tried them on and they were the type of fangs that you can like glue to your teeth. Um, it's not like you're putting them in like dentures or anything. So I tried them on and they, they worked great, but then I took them off and it took me like a week to get the glue off of my teeth. I thought I was gonna have to like go in and have a dentist scrape it off. Cause I was just like constantly just like scraping against my teeth to get it off. And um, I decided that it wasn't a good idea for me to wear those for the reaction, but I got like the full black shirt. Um, I didn't have any velvet, R.I.P. Craven? Craven. R.I.P. Craven. Um, yeah. <laughs> Little insight into my life. Oh, I should probably actually wear my headphones. That's kind of like a requirement, Kyle. <sighs> I never know. <laughs> oh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Going through puberty again? <clears throat> I never know how much of these I should keep in the reaction.
Do you guys like these bloopers or do they annoy the crap out of you? Let me know what you think. Be honest, be harsh, crush my soul into little pieces and then step on it. I can tell you this, you know what I'm really scared? I'm scared that this movie is going to be bad. Cause if teenage me liked it, sometimes I watched movies that teenage me liked and I'm like, yeah, teenage me was really dumb and horny, wasn't he? And like, <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we actually go. I think I've said that like 20 million times now. Agum.